Hi, this is Dr. Jeffrey Moss, and I want to welcome you to this edition of Moss Minutes. Today actually was supposed to be a continuation of a discussion I'd started previously on protein, issues of uh, protein deficiency, uh, the need to give more protein, free-form amino acids and diet, supplementation, etc. However, I wanted to set it aside for just one Moss Minutes edition because there's an ongoing issue that it continues to be ongoing and it comes up so frequently I just felt that there was a real need to talk about it because it has led to really a tremendous amount of I think frustration, confusion, wasted money, wasted time and uh, it really revolves around uh, something we hear all the time in relationship to natural substances and clinical nutrition. Uh, we hear this is good for you, this is bad for you, uh, this is healthy, this is unhealthy. We hear that all the time, don't we? Uh, I get the question so often. I heard, is it true? I've heard this is unhealthy. I heard that this is good for you. And like I said, this comes up all the time, not only just to me. How often do we see it in the mass media? We see it on the internet. We see it in print. We see it on the 24-hour uh, news, news networks, don't we? And what I want to tell you is, First of all, the obvious. These questions frustrate us, don't they? Because what's good for us today was bad for us five years ago. Remember that? And what was bad five years ago is now good today. How can we resolve a lot of this confusion? Well, it comes down to a central issue that rarely gets talked about. And that's the issue of when we're talking about these supplements, sub substances, we have to ask another simple question. How much? The issue of dosing, which rarely gets discussed. Now, fortunately, there is a whole body of research done by a whole group of research that's been looking at this critical issue of dosing for quite some time, and it comes under the collective term hormesis. And what does the term hormesis mean? It basically means that when you have really any substance, large amounts are, tend to be toxic and small amounts particularly of substances found in the human body, tend to be beneficial. And there's many, many articles written on this by a, a couple of primary researchers, and these were recently put into a book, and it's called Hormesis, A Revolution in Biology, Toxicology, and Medicine by Madsen and Calabrese. And that's the book they're just published. And they talk about this issue. And I'll give you an example. They talk about nutrients such as calcium, vitamin A, vitamin D, uh, selenium, the idea that dosage really makes all the difference in terms of whether it's beneficial or harmful. In fact, they also talk about the issue of free radicals. Now, we hear about free radicals like, oh my God, bad for us, it's bad, right? No, depends on the amount. They point out that free radicals are naturally found in the human body and certain amounts are incredibly beneficial, incredibly necessary, but at certain amounts, they are harmful. Now, the position they take on these substances is very interesting because it's different than the way we usually look at them. How do we tend to think about these nutrients, selenium, vitamin A, vitamin D, etc.? When we tend to think of them, these are healthy substances, that's our kind of our baseline, isn't it? And that at a certain amount, they're harmful. Their research shows actually just the opposite, particularly from an evolutionary perspective. Their point of view is that traditionally, when we look back from a, a whole life on earth standpoint, these substances start as harmful. Selenium was harmful. Vitamin A was harmful. However, as life evolved on earth, what happened, there were genetic changes, really genetic adaptations. These substances were part of the environment. They weren't going away. So from an evolutionary standpoint, the body literally changed from a genetic standpoint, so that not only were small amounts accommodated, that life cellular function actually evolved so that these substances were now helpful. It's a different way of looking at it, isn't it? That these are naturally harmful substances that at certain dosages are going to be helpful. Now, fortunately, research is now changing in terms of the looking at it in terms of the importance of dosing. How often do we hear about research papers, and people love to use research papers, don't they, to support their agenda of being good, of being bad. We always hear about the research paper, being healthy and unhealthy. When you read the studies in the section that nobody reads, Materials and Methods, 
They usually talk about the amount that was used in the study. But how often do we actually even hear about that in these discussions, these agenda-based discussions designed to sell an idea, an agenda, a book, some supplements that we talk about, well, maybe it's dose-dependent, not very often. But fortunately, fortunately, this is now changing. I'll give you an idea. This is a paper that came from this, this month's uh, Nutrition Reviews, the July 2010 edition, uh, entitled Hormesis and Synergy, Pathways and Mechanisms of Coercident in Cancer Prevention and Management by Vargas and Bird. And as the title suggests, they're looking at coercion from a different perspective. Now, what do we hear about coercion? Oh, it's good for you. Oh, it's bad for you. No. These terms are really meaningless without looking at the issue of dosage. And that's exactly what they're saying in the title of the paper. Without looking at the issue of dosage, we really cannot make any qualitative, healthy, unhealthy decisions about coercion. So certainly the authors, uh, Madsen and Calabrese, who've really been working on this research, uh, I've been pointing it out for years, but it's now getting attention from other researchers also. So again, I just leave you with that thought. You're going to continue to hear it. We're all going to continue to hear it. It's good for you. It's bad for you. It's healthy. It's unhealthy. For those people who use those statements to sell you an agenda, a book, a supplement, before you make a decision, ask another question that they aren't used to hearing. Tell me about the dosage. How much is good for you? Without knowing that, terms healthy, unhealthy, good, bad in terms of substances naturally found in the human body are really meaningless. This is Dr. Jeffrey Moss. I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Moss Minutes. I look forward to talking to you next time.